Doctor. Remember, come to my show in Delhi. Fuyo. Say old Terry Maki. What what does that mean? I have. If you're not familiar with what I do, for people who are not familiar with what I do, I play this character called Uncle Roger on the internet, and I mostly roast Western chefs for messing up Asian food. I think India that would be a cool place. You know, I know I have fans from there. I know people like it when I review Indian food, so I figured why not go try. You know, do my stand-up comedy tour in India. China is a place where sometimes I feel like there are certain things that they don't want people joking about, but you know, I joked about those things, and that's why all my Chinese social media got uh, so Chinese social media platforms got pulled. Uh, it's just a shame, but I stand by that joke. I think it's a really funny joke. First of all, I want to try all the all the things I reviewed. Uh, I know like biryani is a big thing in your country, and every region's different. So I'll just try whatever biryani they have in Delhi, and you know I can't try everything. Time to say PR Kartahun. Hello and welcome to News Eighteen. Today we have with us comedian and. Social media creator Nigel Ng, Uncle Roger, with us. Thank you so much, uh, Nigel, to join us. It is a pleasure having you on the show. Of course, no worries. Thank you, uh, Nigel. So you're coming to India with your tour. Uh, you know what can we expect from you? What how what what made you decide that this time it has to be in India? Well, I have. If you're not familiar with what I do, for people who are not familiar with what I do. I play this character called Uncle Roger on the internet, and I mostly roast Western chefs for messing up Asian food. And <laughs> I've uh, reviewed Indian food before. I've reviewed biryanis. I reviewed uh, butter chickens and curries, that kind of thing. And I feel like you know, whatever country I've reviewed, who, whatever country whose food I reviewed, I I always get a good response from the people there, and I want to tour those countries. So I've. Toured Thailand. I've toured Malaysia, of course. I, I'm touring Taipei, Taiwan as well.、Uh, so I think India that would be a cool place. You know, I know I have fans from there. I know people like it when I review Indian food. So I figured, why not go try? You know, do my stand-up comedy tour in India. Absolutely, you know that. So,、uh, but what what kind of content are we looking at this time when you, when it comes to your stand-up comedy? What can the audience expect? So in my stand-up show, the first section, the first half is Uncle Roger coming out. Doing some jokes, roasting the crowd a little bit, poking fun of them, and then we have a quick intermission. And afterwards, I come out and do a whole hour of stand-up as myself. So、uh, my stand-up ranges from just general observational stuff, everyday humor,、uh, all the way to a lot of Asian jokes, food jokes, relatable Asian jokes, jokes about how I I used to live in London and and people can't cook there and people always mess up rice. And all all those things, so everything that's relatable,、uh, it's it's a comedy show that everybody will get, and people will like it. Even if you don't know my work as Uncle Roger, you'll still、mm. come and you'll still have a good time. Absolutely, no doubt.、Uh, you know, coming to your professional side and your journey so far,、uh, did you ever plan? You know, or when you started off, did you ever know that you will be sitting here, probably touring and you know planning across your career? What was your journey like? The journey,、uh, ooh, I I would never expect this level of、um, uh, 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 success, I guess, because nobody, we really, we, we when we start out, all we want to do is just to get good at stand up, you know. So I started doing stand up in two thousand eleven, and slowly, slowly,、mm-hmm. slowly started getting better, started getting paid, went full time, and then COVID hit in twenty twenty. So I lost all my stand-up work, and that's when I realized, oh, let me try to do something online. And very fortunately,、um, this Uncle Roger stuff blew up. And I've never imagined I would ever be in this position where I've managed to combine the the food world and the comedy world together. And not only am I going on tour, I'm also starting a restaurant and and launching、uh, food products in in the in the food space. So it's just all very exciting. It's very new, and I do not take it for granted. You know, I really appreciate. Absolutely, no doubt. You know, you we we can clearly understand that you love food in every aspect of it. Yeah, you know,、uh, what what is your favorite cuisine, and what kind of uh, uh, you know restaurant are you starting, or what can we expect there? Favorite cuisine, I'm biased, but it has to be Malaysian, right? I, I'm from、right. here, I'm from here, and Malaysian cuisine is is very is is very varied. You know, mal, mal, it's multicultural.、Uh, there's a huge Indian component in our cuisine as well. If, if, I, I'm, a lot of people don't know, but you know, we eat biryani is very common here. Roti is very common here.、Uh, that kind of thing. My restaurant is、um, 
It's an Ankaraji restaurant, so it has to be fried rice. Fried rice is the main <laughs> thrust. You can order a fried rice and customize it based on some toppings. It's a quick service restaurant, so, so not fully sit down table service, but it's just fun. It's a uh, comfort food, everyday food, and hopefully, you know, one day I can open one, a branch of it in India. Absolutely, we would love to have an Uncle Raj restaurant over here, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nigel, uh, coming to a part where social media, as much as we, we praise things on social media, there's also a downside on a negative side of social media as well. Uh, do you think when you when you do something to entertain the crowd, is there by any chance you feel that you know people don't consume entertainment content just for the sake of entertainment and they delve too much into the details? I think, yeah, there's always that worry. You know, you put something out there you know, the intent is to be funny and to make people laugh, but you can't control how other people interpret your words and interpret mm -hmm. what you say, right? So, uh, for instance, last year I got into some trouble with uh, Cambodia and Laos. Yes. Uh, yes. Because I, I just jokingly said that their food is like a worse version of Thai food. And so, you know how Asian people are. We are very proud of our own cuisine, our own culture. True. And we always have something to say to other people, you know, something to complain about. So when they saw that, they thought I meant it seriously. And uh, yeah, there was just a, a big, big storm online of people uh, say, True. oh, I can't believe this influencer said this about our food. I think that's the downside of social media, I guess, because what you say is just instantly uh, propagated to all these people in the world. And you can't really control how they think of you. So the, for people who do social media, I think it's important to have thick skin. No doubt, absolutely. But has this forced you to like tone down your jokes or tone down your content the way, you know, just to not have such a repercussion? I think you have to stay true to what got you success in the first place, right? And the thing that got me here was this irreverence, this uh, roasty type humor that's slightly near the edge, near the boundary. And because of it's that kind of jokes, they're not the most, they're not like super safe jokes. Right, mm -hmm. they push the envelope a little bit, and because of those types of jokes, I think it's 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 normal for me to sometimes maybe overstep the line or uh, miss the mark. But I think I have to I have to realize, oh, this is what people signed up for. This is what people like me for. If I just start getting scared and start being extra careful of what I say, I think Uncle Roger loses its its spark. True, no doubt. Do you do you also believe as a stand up comedian, Nigel? You know things were. A little more easier in the pre-COVID or pre-social media era for stand-up comedians to deliver their jokes, or you know, even even for instance, like for instance, just drawing uh, inspiration from Russell Peters over here. He has always talked about Indian uh, Indian people and Indian accent, but you know, the very very few times we have seen that Russell getting into trouble for that. He's definitely got into trouble at times, but you know, do you think it was a little more easier for the, for uh, for the people before? I think. I think the answer is yes and no, you know, I, I guess you can say it was easier because things didn't spread as fast. And what you say in a comedy club stays in a comedy club, right? Because mm. in a comedy club, in the with that context, people know you're joking. They're at a comedy club. So people, everybody knows you're joking. So when you clip that video of a comedy club, you put it online, then people start thinking, oh, is he being serious? Is this guy just giving statements, right? These are not jokes anymore. These are statements. But I would say, on the other hand, it's harder before COVID and, and before social media because, uh, you know, before social media was, was so, so big, to really build a fan base with stand-up, you have to, say, get on TV and get casted mm -hmm. in movies. So that, that itself is a tough process, right? Not everybody, there's only so, so much space on TV. Not everybody can get on TV. There are gatekeepers, you have to audition and you have to be lucky, you have the right producers see you, right executives, TV executives see you and put you on there. But with social media, I feel as an artist, the power is, is more in our hands than before. You just put good stuff out there and if it goes viral, then people discover your work and slowly, slowly, slowly you build a fan base through your own power. Nobody's, um, there are no gatekeepers anymore. No doubt. Uh, you also lived in London for a while, Nigel. Uh, how was it, was it a difficult period for you in, as a nation in London as well? And do you draw inspiration for, from that into your content as well? Uh, it, it was difficult being an Asian in London because the food there is terrible. <laughs> that is, uh, I, I don't know if you've been to the UK, but uh, there is good food in London, but Yes, because there are so few good restaurants, the good restaurants are always packed weeks in mm -hmm. advance. 
And imagine if you want to go out to eat, I'm sure India is, I haven't been before, but I'm sure India is like Malaysia, right? The food is plentiful. Good food mm. is everywhere. Step outside. True. You don't have to call. I would like to make a res reservation for next Thursday at 7.30. You just go. There's space for you there. There's good food. You don't have to think that far. So you you and your friends can just impromptu. Hey, you want to get dinner tonight? Okay, that's good. Let's go. Whereas in London, you have to go, hey, you want to get dinner two Thursdays from now? And then you have to check your calendar and then, and then you, you go. Yeah, so that was, that was hard for me. I ended up in London nowadays. When, every time I go back and visit, I just recycle the same five restaurants that I, who's <laughs> open, I know and I can text them, hey, can I get a spot? That kind of thing. So that was, that's why it's hard. Lack of good food options. <laughs> I understand. Uh, uh, Nigel, on the other hand, uh, you know, you it's, it's also on your Instagram bio, you've written the reason I got banned in China. You know, what <laughs> according to you went wrong over there? So uh, this was, uh, I think, last year. Yeah, last year I posted a joke from my special um, uh, Taiwan versus China joke. So uh, I think, you know, sometimes China is a place where sometimes I feel like there are certain things that they don't want people joking about. But, you know, I joked about those things. And that's why all my Chinese social media got, uh, so Chinese social media platforms got pulled. Uh, it's just a shame, but... I stand by that joke. I think it's a really funny joke, and may maybe I'll still I'll still do it in 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 Delhi. But oh oh, oh although I, it probably won't work in Delhi because you guys are you know, <laughs> kind of a little bit further apart. But maybe I'll do I it understand. in time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, uh, 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 Nigel. Uh, do you do you intend to explore a little more food in India? What what is what is in your bucket list when you come to India? Oh, so I have ton I have a few places saved. I can't remember now off the top, top of my head, but first of all, I want to try all the all the things I reviewed. Uh I know like biryani is a big thing in your country and every region's different. So I'll just try whatever biryani they have in Delhi. And you know, I can't try everything. Your country's big and you see you have so much food. I want to try things that I've never even heard of. Uh okay. because I know I mean I know gold guppas, right? I'm sure I can, I can get some of that. I, 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 I also know the very mainstream Indian food and mostly mostly northern Indian food. Uh, Absolutely. So I'll try things that are different, things that are a little, that, that are a little bit obscure, uh, things that I never heard of. Absolutely. You're going to the right place. You're going to Delhi, right? So it's yes. absolutely fine. Uh, Nigel, uh, have you put got your hands on a little bit of Hindi lessons as well? No, no. Teach me. Teach me a few things. <laughs> oh, if I, what if, is this Hindi? I, I've reviewed something before and they say Otari Maki. What, what does that <laughs> Okay, you can't say that in Delhi for sure. Say, oh. <laughs> like it's actually not no-no. It's not like you're just saying your mothers. You know, that's oh. all in, in little <laughs> translation, but it's a little bit of a slang in Hindi when it comes. You can say something like, Main tumse pyar karta hu. Can you say that for us? Say, say it again. You say, Main, Main? Tumse तुम से बहुत बहुत प्यार प्यार करता हूँ करता हूँ करता हूँ K A R T A if I have to write it down in English करता हूँ write in the chat yes. in the, so I can uh, okay I will I will for sure I will for sure just a second there you go Hope you don't get into trouble for me saying that phrase earlier. No, absolutely. This means I I really love you. Yeah, like really. It, it has to, it's for the crowd. Yeah, it's for the it's for the crowd. Ain tum se pyar karta hun. Are you are you are you messing with me? I mean, I no, absolutely not. You can check with anybody if you want to if you want to hear. <laughs> I funny. won't get into trouble. Yeah, mine, you should definitely try some Hindi in Delhi. Definitely. Yes, ain tum se pyar karta hun. Absolutely great. Thank you so much, uh -huh. Nigel. Nigel, just one small request we have from all our social media fans. We just want to hear you say something in Uncle Roger's accent. Okay. Anything that you want to say. Uh, okay. News News 18, right? Okay. Yes. Hello, News 18 niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. Remember, come to my show in Delhi. Fuyo! Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nigel, on that one. Love you. We'll definitely see you in India. Thank you, Thanks. Nigel, for your time. Thank, Thank you. you, Nishad. Thank you. Bye.